So we talked about brain aging, mm-hmm. you know, traumatic brain injury, which is stress. We talked yeah. about lack of sleep, you know, and things that's stressing the brain. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess, you know, neurodegenerative disease is a very yeah. stressful thing on the brain as yeah. well. It would be interesting to see mm-hmm. uh, if creatine can help in that regard. Mm-hmm. Although, again, prevention is always... Yeah. It's always better, right, if you can Yeah, we've looked at the totality of limited evidence, and we're not seeing a lot of effects yet. Um, There's benefits on young boys with muscular dystrophy, but that's a little bit different. But when we look at ALS, Parkinson's, Huntington's, uh, multiple sclerosis, um, all those dementia and Alzheimer's, we're not seeing a lot of promise. There's been a few small-scale studies that show benefits, but when you look at a properly sample-sized study, there was a big one five years in, in Germany, didn't see any greater effects. Um, so again, maybe the dose was too, when I look at the dose they use, it was very small compared to now our, our body of evidence suggesting higher dose, big sample size. And then of course, what about the, the effects of the disease? Can creatine really rescue the effects to give a significant effect? We don't know. Preventing would be the number one thing, but, uh, we're starting to do a study in Northern Iowa to look at the effects of creatine now in individuals with cognitive decline. Um, and I believe there's a study out of Kansas that are actually looking at people with diagnosed Alzheimer's. So super excited to see these results, if it can have any effect, even help one person, um, even regardless of a statistical effect, if it can have individual results. I think it's something we need to consider. Yeah. OK, well, what I was going to get to was the other um, mm-hmm. part of, you know, brain disorders, 